Right, and now for number 12, we have that. The cross-section of an arced entrance into the ballroom of a hotel is in the shape of a parabola. This cross-section cross can be modeled by part of the graph y equals blah. See, blah being that thing on the right side. Where y is the height of the arcway in meters at a horizontal distance, we have x meters. From the point O in the bottom corner of the arcway. All right, cool. So for part A, we have determine an equation for the axis of symmetry of the parabola that models the arcway. What the hell is axis of symmetry? So axis of symmetry in a parabola, which is the cool thing of a parabola, is that it's perfectly symmetrical. Okay, it, it can also be a little bit like your face. See, so you're in your face, you have one eye here, one eye here, you have one nostril here, another nostril there, cierto? Uh, whatever your smile, etc. I don't know. See? Certain amount of teeth here, certain amount of teeth there. It is perfectly, perfectly symmetrical. See? Perfectly symmetrical. You have one eye, one eye, one nose, one nose. I mean, one nostril, one nostril. You know what I mean. See? And so axis of symmetry is no different than a parabola. See? If you make a line straight down from the middle, this distance from, say, here to here is the same as from here to here. The distance from here to here is the same as from here to here. All right, because of the axis of symmetry of the nature of parabolas. So how the hell can I find an equation or how can I find the axis of symmetry, so the which x value is the axis of symmetry for the parabola? Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, when you walk into the test for your IB exams, you're going to be walking in with your pencil, probably a pen as well your calculator, your brain, your confidence, and da -da -da, your formula booklet, okay? You have to get familiar with your formula booklet. You have to know what's in it, know what tools are in there, know what you can use, what you can't, etc. So if you go to your formula booklet, and once you get familiar with it, you're going to see that for axis of symmetry, there is an equation you can use. It is right here on page number five. All right, so axis of symmetry, as you can see here, is this, see? What it's basically saying is that if you have a parabola, ¿cierto? how do you know it's a parabola? Because it's squared. If you have a parabola, your axis of symmetry is gonna be x equals negative b over 2a, see? What is b, what is a? a is the one that has x squared next to it, b is the one that has a single x next to it, see? And c is the one that's alone. So, my equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So for part a, I need to do negative b over 2a. So what is b, what is a? Well, my function, right, is y equals negative 1.6 x squared plus 4.48x. So if I go ahead and I get really mean with you and I tell you or I ask you what is a, what is B? What is C? Well, you're probably going to tell me that A, ¿cierto? the one with the x squared next to it, is negative 1.6. For B, you would say 4.48. And for C, you would probably be like, wait, what? Here, my C value is technically 0. All right? It's not that it's, I mean, yeah, it's not there. And if it's not there, your C value is 0. Okay, just so that you know, that is how it works. Okay, that can happen with your B value as well. So careful with that. Vale? But yeah, so your C value here is zero. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but just so that you guys know, okay, that is how it works. All right, cool. So if I go ahead and plug in negative B over 2A, I would be plugging in negative 4.48 divided by 2 times negative 1.6. How much is that? Let's see our calculator. If you ever need to plug in a fraction, I suggest using alpha y equals. Alpha y equals brings up this menu. Press the first one. Boom. You now have a fraction and it's much easier to plug in. You don't mess up the double negatives and stuff like that. Yada, yada, yada. Boom. 1.4. So that means that, well, for part A, it's 1.4. Um, and right here, I have an x value of 1.4. All right, that is part A, cool. For part B, da -da -da -da, they say, to prepare for an event, 
a square, okay, a square based crate that is 1.6 meters wide and 2 meters high is to be moved through the arcway into the ballroom. Wait, that doesn't sound like a square. I thought squares were the same dimensions. All right, whatever, man. We've got a fucking crate. See, it's 1.6 meters wide and 2 meters high. It is to be moved through the arcway into the ballroom, and the crate must remain upright while it is being moved. For part B, we need to determine whether the crate will fit through the arcway and to justify our answer. All right, so, guys, if you were to have to fit a crate through an arcway, through which side would you try to do it? Would you try to do it through the left side? Would you try to do it through the right side? Nah, brother. You would try to do it right down the middle. Why right down the middle? I know it's intuitive, but put it in words. Why? You would do it right down the middle because it's where you have the most space. See? It's also where it's the most tall. Okay? So you will be putting it through the middle. See? Now, a lot of people here would say, ah, 1.6 meters wide. Come on. Oh, my x is 1.4. Come on. They get a little bit tripped up on it. See? But notice, if my square, I mean, sorry, if my crate is going right through the middle, see? Let's say that it's something like this. See? I don't know the dimensions yet, but, I mean, I don't know if it's going to fit or not, but I'm going to draw it like this for now. See? If it goes through here, see? The 1.6 meters wide, where would it be? A lot of people get confused. They think it's from 0 to 1.6 like this. But actually, the 1.6 meters wide is like that. That is the how wide my crate is, see? So how much to the left, or what is my x value here, and what is my right value there? That is the real question. Uh-huh. So if it's going through the middle, and here it's 1.6, see, as I mentioned earlier, how much to the, this distance here is the same as this distance here, see? And because I'm doing 1.6, well, 1.6 divided by 2 gives me 0 0.8. So that means... That means, hold on to, hold on, see, hold on. That means that if my axis of symmetry is 1.4, it is going to be 0 0.6, like my x value is 0 0.6 over here on the left, and, and 2.2 .2 on the right. Those are the dimensions for my x values of my crate, see? Now we just need to see if they're high enough, Tirta, because this height here could be up here. See? It's something that I have to discover. This is just a drawing for convenience. So let's go ahead and plug in, right? Let's go ahead and plug in 0 0.6 for my f of x, 2.2 .2 for my f of x, and see if it's taller, Tirta, than my maximum here. See? So um, if I go ahead and plug in 0 0.6, Tirta, for f of x, so I'm going to plug in f of 0 0.6. It means that here, I'm going to have negative 1.6 times 0 0.6 squared plus 4.48 times 0 0.6. So I plug it. I whip out my calculator. I plug in 0 0.6. I do the whole thing. And I end up with... I end up with... Kapow! 2.112. 2.112. All right, what does that mean? See? It means that at an x value of 0 0.6, this value here is 2.112. See? And how high is my crate? My crate is 2 meters high. And so this crate, I'm just going to draw it a little more accurate. See? This crate looks something like this. All right, so here the crate fits because my maximum, cierto, how high the arcway is at that point, cierto, is 2.112, but the height of the crate is just 2. And so it's below it, it's fair, I have a little bit of space where it doesn't touch, the crate fits, okay? And because it's a quadratic and it's all symmetrical, if it fits through the left side, it's going to fit through the right side because this value here is the same as this value here. See? If you're not sure and you're nervous and you want to check, I totally respect that. Cierto? I'm going to go ahead and plug in 2.2 .2 here. See? See if it's still uh, below 2 meters. See? 
or below 2.11, ¿cierto? So again, I'm plug plug in, boom, it's the same value, ¿cierto? So that means, again, my crates is not touching. That means it's going to fit through my arc way. And that is how you would actually justify it. See, the very, very fancy way to do it is that, well, you show your work like this, and then you would say 2.112 is greater than 2. And because it's greater than 2, it doesn't touch. Doesn't touch. Crate fits. Right? That is how I would justify it. And that is number 12.